يعطيك العافية أبو طارق. I will make turned off everybody. So our microphone will be for you, Abu Marwan. Abu Marwan will take us to Acre. San John de Acre. Somebody called it by mistake. San John Dark, but it's not. It is San John de Acre. And through the history, the Crusade history, the Ottoman history, until today. So we are here today in the seventh English meeting. Please, Abu Marwan, we are all ears. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone. Like I said, maybe last time, it's a privilege to uh, do a lecture in English. I know that I'm not going to add a lot to all of you, except maybe some of my English. It might be a rush. So uh, mention that I'm talking too fast or if there is a word that you don't understand, just also wave and I'll uh, do my best to speak slowly, okay? Uh, the subject that was uh, chosen, or I chose it last time, uh, was about Akka. And why Akka? There is also outlines over here, outlines about the history of uh, Acre or Akka that was inhibited uh, 2,000 years before the birth of Christ. And the people who came and settled over there, they settled on a tell, T-E-L, which is a small hill. Uh, in the 19th century, it was mentioned in the letters of the Egyptians. That means it was somehow uh, an important site or settlement. In the 14th century, BCE, it was mentioned 13 times in the Amarni letters. The Amarni letters are found in uh, one more site in Egypt. That's where almost all of the letters at that period of time uh, went. The year 720, it was occupied by the Assyrian Sanharib. 332, it was occupied by Alexander Macdon, that is the Hellenized. Hellenistic period up to the year 281, it was called Ptolemaeus. Under the ground, water tunnel was built from Capri to Akka or Acre or Akko in Hebrew. The year 40 BCE, the Romans occupation. 638, the Arabs or the Muslim occupation, and it was occupied by Omar ibn al-As. 1099, that was the Crusaders occupation to our country. I call it occupation by Baldwin I. And at that time, 1099, they could not take Akko. All the cities that were at the uh, sea, they were fort <clears throat> fortified by huge walls. So the crusaders said, let them wait. We want to go all the way to Jerusalem and conquer it. That was 1099. And they came back to Akko to occupy it. It was occupied 1104. The 12th century, Akka was governed by the Crusaders and it became a European town or city. Then at the year 1187, Salah ad din was able to occupy it and kick the Crusaders. They came back four years afterwards, 1191, and the city was occupied by Richard the Lionheart and it became the capital of the kingdom because Jerusalem fell down and they could not occupy it once more. They made it the capital. Akka was the capital. Until the year 1291, the city fell under Al-Marik Al-Ashraf, a Mamluk, and that was the end of the Crusaders period. 
1516, the Uthmani period occupation by Fakhr al-Din II ruled the area. And 1725, Dahir al-Umar, who was an independent Bedouin ruler under the Turks, of course, makes a lot of renovations to the city of Akka. And then Ahmad al-Jazzar, very famous ruler, 1775 to 1804. He ruled the country. He was a Muslim Bosnian. In the beginning, he was a Christian by birth. And then he uh, took Islam as his religion and became a ruler somehow. And uh, he ruled not just Akka or Akko, Beirut and Damascus. And he wanted to uh, even rule Egypt, but he uh, died at that period. In the year 1799, in between, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte of France came to the country after he conquered Egypt. He came through the uh, Sharon Valley until he reached Jaffa. He took Jaffa and Haifa, and when he came to uh, Akko or Akka, he could not uh, conquer it, and he was defeated. He retreated in the year 1799. Uh, it reminds you of the pyramid shape at the uh, St. Elijah's Monastery. Remember that. 1804 to 1819, uh, his successor, the successor of al Jazar, Suleiman Basha, renovated the walls of Akka once again. He built the White Mosque. The old Akko, I said, settlement was known from the Bronze Age, a small settlement on the top of the till. We call it the Napoleon still or Al Fukhar till. Al Fukhar, clay, because they found a lot of clay pieces that goes back to the periods. Remember an artificial till long time ago, how it was formed. One group of people would come and settle on one place, it should be a little bit high so they can overlook what's going on around them. There should be four reasons. One reason, crossroads. The second reason, uh, planes to plant. They needed a lot of planes. A third reason, a high place for protection. And a fourth reason, uh, they needed water. So all of these things, uh, are near by the place because even today you can uh, see that there is a river or a creek passing by south of Acre. It's called the Naman River or Creek once again. Okay. Uh, the Persian conquered it and then Hercules, uh, the uh, famous Hercules that we hear about, he found a herb. He was sick and he found a herb, a plant that is. Okay, uh, and he took that herb and he was uh, treated by that herb and to be treated or to be cured, that means healthy again. Uh, in, uh, that, in their language, the Hercules language, it means Aka, A-C-A, Aka, which means cure. So it was called, the tell was called Ptolemaeus or Antioch Ptolemaeus. 638, the Muslims, and uh, it was taken, the ruler of Egypt, Ahmad bin Tolon. He built the harbor or the port, we call it, at the end of the ninth century. And then the Crusades. What I'm going to talk about today are two major periods, and the major one is the uh, Crusaders. Now, just... Uh, Something I could not find in any uh, source to tell you about, but I have heard it from uh, the great teacher, uh, Anat. She uh, all the time teaches about Acre, Akko, the hospitalers, and so on. Now, how did they discover the underground city? As you all know, there is a prison on the top of the uh, night's halls, right? She said, at that period of time, some soldiers who were 
present for a lot of period, a lot of period, that means either a sentence of death or <clears throat> life sentence. That means they will stay there until they die. They agreed all together to uh, do something so they can accept, uh, escape. So they started digging uh, in the ground of that prison. And the watchman who was British, but they called him Abu George, he was watching and laughing or smiling because he knew that there is no way to escape. Until one day, uh, there was an air coming from that hole that they dug and he asked them to stop. And that was the trigger to excavate the area. And the beginning was the night's hole. Okay, this is what you see over here is Tel el Fukhar or Napoleon's Tell. Uh, it is a site today that you can go and visit. There are uh, some paths and you can see some of the archeology span uh, that they found over there, archeological sites. From there, we go into the enchanted uh, garden, enchanted garden over here. That is the entrance to the hospitalers complex at the Citadel. I wrote over here the times and the entrance fees. That is 49 shekels per person. You can visit not just the uh, Crusaders complex, you can visit also Hammam El Basha, and you can also visit the museum at the walls, okay, with the ticket itself. And the tunnels, the Temple of Tunnels. When you go inside, you can visit everything except the Templar's Tunnel. You need another ticket for it. Now, who are the Crusaders? We say that the Crusaders are European people. At the beginning, they said that uh, there was unemployment in Europe and people got, uh, you know, uh, sick and they did not want their rulers and so on. That's why they said, let us do something to go and conquer the Holy Land, to save it from the hands of the Muslims. Most of them were, in the beginning, French and English. And in the way, uh, a lot of Europeans followed them, like Italians, like uh, Hollands, and so on. And they came to the country. No one was saved from their hands. Uh, so uh, it's not a Christian thing. It was conquering the land, and they uh, did a lot of things. Now, before that, before the campaigns of the Crusaders, since... Uh, there was a period that we call the Byzantine period until 314, and then 638, the uh, area was conquered by the Arabs, the Muslims. So the uh, Byzantine era was ended, and it was very hard for Christian pilgrims to come to the country, and they needed protection. One part of the Crusades, who were called the Hospitallers, the Hospitallers, they are the order of the knights uh, of the hospital of St. John of Jerusalem that we abbreviated into Knights Hospitallers. Their main aim was to protect the pilgrims since they come to the port of Jaffa, take them to Jerusalem or take them to Nazareth and Tiberias or to Haifa and they made fortifications on the way sometimes, but they settled at uh, an acre. I will mention that afterwards. Okay, just a minute, please. <laughs> now, I mentioned that 1099, the Crusaders could not take Akko or Akka, and they wanted it uh, so bad, so they came back, it was fortified. The Arabs fortified it, from the time of the Umayyad period. I have drawings of the walls, I will show you. Afterwards, it was fortified also by uh, other Arabs uh, who ruled. And when they came, the Crusaders, they could not take it. They made a siege around it and that was in vain. So they thought, they said, why don't we ask the help of our people in Europe who have fleets? Fleet, that means ships with soldiers. And in Italy itself, there were three places they could 
<clears throat> ask for that. And they turned to the Venetians from Venice to help them conquering Acre. And the Venetians said, yes, but there are four conditions. They wanted one third of the land that the <clears throat> Crusaders have already uh, overcome. <clears throat> Sorry. One third of the city of Akka. They don't want to pay taxes at the harbor. And the fourth, full autonomy, not to be asked about anything. And the king agreed. And that's how they were able to conquer Akka. And in a while, we will see a drawing of the position that they took at Acre. They needed to conquer the Crusaders, Sidon, so they asked the people of Genoa, those who have fleets and soldiers. That was the year uh, 1024. And the year, the year 1064, they asked the people of Pisa to capture Alexandria. And they put they all put the same conditions. And in addition to that, they needed to go into Akka to have one part of Akka. OK? Afterwards, of course, the hospitalers uh, who had already taken a permission from the Pope in order to carry their uh, arms, in order to defend the pilgrims and themselves, and the Templars were given some land in the uh, walled city of Acre, and it became a European city for everything. I mentioned who are the Crusaders and uh, how they settled over here. This is a drawing that I drew about the city. Uh, since Akko is on the shores of the Mediterranean and it has a small gulf, the Gulf of Akka, uh, meeting the Gulf of Haifa. It's to the north of Haifa. Now the king wanted to have the Cathena. Cathena, that is the harbor. The meaning of Cathena is chain. They must have put a chain so people will not go into the port itself and in order to be regulated. And he asked to have also the fonda, that is the market uh, at Akka, and we also called it the dome. The dome that is the ecclesia, the church, that's where he had his castle. Now, the road that led from the Cathena to the Fonda called Via uh, Rigis, Via Rigis. And if you take a look to the right, you can see that is uh, in my handwriting, very bad handwriting, uh, Venetians. The Venetians took that uh, brown lane. And then afterwards, when they asked the uh, people of Ganawa to help them, they took the area to the left of the Via Regis, okay? And uh, they built houses two and three stories high. Uh, that road was not a highway, it was very narrow, and they could see each other from the windows. They can shout at each other from the windows, and they celebrated their weddings, funerals, and everything. Now, the people of Pisa, when they helped the Crusaders, they wanted a place nearby the Cathena, nearby the port. The black thing over here, that is the people of Pisa. Mm -hmm. Now, the hospitalers were giving a place nearby the Fonda, nearby the dome, that was called Saint Jean de Ecre. But uh, afterwards, they built nearby. Now, their buildings, they needed a square area and they built uh, a lot of uh, tall rooms, very long and very high. Uh, we can call them fortresses. Uh, it was the night halls that is to, to the north, and then to the uh, east, to the south, and uh, I own hospitalers. Yeah, yeah, I, uh -huh. I, I mentioned it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, where... Uh, it was marked already. That is the uh, area of the king also. He wanted it. 
rectangular area, they call it, the king area, the rectangular. And uh, the Templars, I don't know if you have uh, been there, you know where the uh, lighthouse today, to the right of the lighthouse, there is an area that sank in the sea. <coughs> they had a huge fortress, in addition to being monks, in addition to being warriors, they were very uh, clever in dealing with money. So they asked the people back in Europe, if you want to go to the Holy Land, why don't you give us your money and we will give you a paper when you reach Jaffa, uh, Akka, we will give you the money with uh, some interest. So did that, uh, they did that when uh, people reached the uh, port of Akka. After a while, people left the area, uh, not leave it, I mean, it was almost overpopulated. So they built uh, another quarter north of Akko to the north over here on that side, to the north of uh, the walls, and they called it Mont Mazor. That is uh, maybe the beautiful area, <clears throat> the beautiful area, even till today, it was after the moat, after the moat. The Crusaders, the Crusaders, this is a map uh, in English, okay? Yes. Okay, this is uh, over here, the entrance. Over here, this is the entrance to the whole complex. When you enter to your left, to the, your right hand side, if you are facing uh, over here, these are the uh, knights' halls, the knights' halls. Normal entrance, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. This is the entrance. These are the knight halls. This is the entrance. The entrance. These are the knight halls. One of the knight halls. Uh, I don't know if when you studied tourism, when they took you to uh, the night halls, showed you where the prisoners broke that ceiling and it was the trigger to start uh, cleaning those night halls and it was the beginning. Uh, maybe I forgot to mention that Akka is uh, protected by the UNESCO, it's World Heritage Area, because there is nothing like it in the world. Maybe on the top of the earth on the ground, but not under the ground like the city itself. Over here, we have a whole complex. We will see another one in Hebrew. Uh, I cannot draw these things, but uh, this area over here, the, uh, this is the uh, pillars hole, the pillars hole. And on this area over here, we have the northern gate nearby to the left of the northern gate, we have the toilet area. There are about 30 uh, public toilets in this place. Over here, we have the courtyard of the Crusaders. The courtyard must have uh, a water well, and they do have a uh, water well. If you, of course, you have entered Acre more than once. Uh, uh, nearby this side over here where Steve is showing you, there's a water well about three meters deep. And there is another hole down, down here. Yes, this is uh, the refractory, they call it, the refractory. It has, uh, in my uh, own opinion, a very beautiful three columns. Uh, each one has about three meters of diameter, very high. Once upon a time, there used to be uh, an opening in the ground uh, down here, and we used to go through it to the tunnel underneath the uh, area that used to lead us all the way to the uh, crypta. Now it's uh, all the way where Steve showed you. Over here, we have a prison, a prison. And the entrance to the prison used to be from the south. Nowadays, it's from the north. The prison, 
because it doesn't have any windows in the prison, uh, all walls. It's not beautiful. It's very dark. So we don't really know that they uh, put prisoners inside, but they found some steel chains uh, in that room. That's why they called it the prison. And over here we have the beautiful uh, room, the beautiful room, because the stones were hewn very beautifully. So uh, they called it the beautiful room. Now, if you are in the courtyard, Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, uh, you will be having this whole uh, lecture into your uh, YouTubes or wherever you have it. Then you can take a look at the map everywhere uh, you can go. Now, when when we go through that tunnel, and a lot of people do, sometimes we have uh, one or two of our group that they cannot go into these uh, a little bit dark, a little bit narrow under the ground. So uh, we will let them stand in the enchanting garden and we collect them afterwards. Uh, it's a problem because when we finish, I said we will go to the, they used to call it the crypta or where they have the tombstones. Uh, at the end of your tour, and then you will be going uh, through a market and uh, that is closed market, and then you will go to the bathhouse. No, great job. Okay, this is one of the drawings that they found, like I uh, mentioned over here, uh, Hebrew and Arabic all together. The castrum, that is the place where they have their uh, buildings. In the beginning, they looked for a, <coughs> a courtyard, and all the way around that courtyard, they built the uh, rooms, very huge rooms, and they built towers on the four corners, as you can see. And uh, this is only one. On the southern, on the southern part of the, uh, we will see another photo, but uh, I want to mention uh, the drawing at the bottom. The drawing at the bottom that was a drawing of one of the pilgrims who came to the country uh, during the period of the Crusaders, not before, not after, during that period. And he made a drawing. This is uh, north, and the other end is south. And as you can see over here, he wrote hospital, which is the headquarters of the hospitalers. And in the middle, ecclesia, that is the church that we call Saint Jean. And that's where the uh, name of Acre came, Saint Jean de Acre. And then the infirmary. Infirmary, that is the hospital, and he drew it as an H in uh, English. So this is a drawing of one uh, artist, not artist, pilgrim, who came to the country. Okay. Uh, I mentioned this. Okay. Now, either before we go into the complex of the uh, Crusaders, when we entered Enchanted Garden, and maybe this is a very old picture to the right one, you can see the citadel. The citadel, and th this is the northern gate. You can go, go through the northern gate all the way to the top of the building. This is what you will be able to see the, uh, to the uh, left-hand side, inside the Hospitaller Castle now. Palestinian panel center at Acre, the great mosque and uh, center background. That is the Al Jazar mosque, but this is where you can see a uh, few black things. Uh, that is the prison. If you haven't visited yet, you remember this prison, maybe from uh, our journeys in the schools, they used to take us to the 
prison in order to see the place of uh, sentencing people to death. And if you remember, uh, they, during the years 36, a little bit before until the year revolution of the Palestinians against the British 1936, they have captured more than 300 Arabs and about 90 Jews. One of the Jews was called Jabotinsky, if I'm not mistaken. And some of the Jews were uh, sentenced to death and almost all of the Arabs were sentenced to death, but three of them that uh, were famous and they uh, made uh, a very sad song about them. Uh, I will mention the first line. من سجن عكا طلعت جنازي أحمد جمجوم وفؤاد حجازي and it goes on you can uh, open at the uh, Google write the song you can hear it there is a, a group of uh, musicians in Acre عكا uh, they sing it and you can see it so now when you enter after you pay your tickets you can see a short movie about Akka, and then you can enter the uh, entrance to uh, a place where they, if you are an individual or you have a small group, they would like to take the uh, earphones uh, with the languages. Uh, you can turn it, they will turn it for you on and they would put it on the language that you need. They have Arabic, Hebrew, English, French, German, etc. And they can tour by the number. They have numbers on the floor where you can start with number one and keep on going in order to tour the whole thing. But before that, uh, over here, you see a model of the uh, complex, the hospitalers uh, building, okay? These are the flags or the banners of the uh, crusaders. They put them over here in this hole that we call the pillars hole. Uh, which is very huge hall. They say maybe it might have been a meeting room for everyone of the Crusaders. Go on. Uh, once again, the same room, they have a lot of decorations over here and they called it the Market Street. I don't know how many people have gone to Acre before they uh, started renovating and maybe have finished renovating a lot of things. You would hear a name for this area, and next time when you come to it, then you would hear another name. This is the entrance to the Knights Halls. There is uh, excavations, 1990, they tell us they started, the Eastern Halls, one to three, and then mostly open spaces, but halls four to six had to be totally cleaned out. They have already cleaned them out, and they have... Uh, uh, lights on the walls and you can uh, listen to some uh, readings or some sayings about these places also. You can see uh, to the right hand side there is stairs, okay? Uh, you, there is a short movie maybe that uh, you will see in these two halls over here and over here and uh, to the left hand side once again they tell us there is about 11 of these holes. Some of them have not been yet excavated. These are to the north, the northern holes. Okay. Uh, the eastern hole is five meter high and consists of six cross vaults. Vault uh, means qabu in uh, Arabic. Cross, that means like a cross. The ceiling is like a cross, okay? And it's uh, a little bit wide uh, on the bottom and starts uh, going narrow at the top, okay? Uh, this is, as I have mentioned over here, the prisoner hall. You can see that there is no light at all, okay? No light at all. I don't know, I have not seen any chains over there. Uh, this is the beautiful hole. Once again, the beautiful hole, uh, it's about seven and a half meters uh, cross bolts. And the uh, the stone is hewn very beautifully, they tell us. I haven't seen a lot of difference between 
uh, the knight's holes and the beautiful hole. Okay, this is the symbol. Uh, when we go to the uh, hole that we call the refractory, if you go to, all the way to the left and once again to the left on the corner, you can see this uh, inscription on one of the uh, columns, and it's the French fleur de lis uh, for Louis the Ninth when he came over here. He told them, "Why don't you put some flowers so it looks more beautiful?" It is the Scouts symbol too. Over here. Yeah. The Pillars Hall, once again, if you have entered the Pillars Hall lately, you have seen the renovation. But if you have gone there 10 years ago, you could see that part of the ceiling have collapsed and they needed to put a new ceiling that is made out of cement. It doesn't look like the original one. But once again, it's a very huge hole, about 500 square meters, with a lot of columns uh, in row. They come in row. Uh, they do not uh, hide uh, anything. One one column. The uh, rest of it, uh, the rest of the columns are behind it exactly. Maybe they used it, like I said before, uh, for uh, meetings. Now maybe I did not mention something once again about the. Knights holds. Knights means the warriors. Uh, Anat Perid, once again, the great teacher of uh, Akko, mentioned that, you know, we know it by reading also about the knights. Each knight needs three helpers to uh, put uh, on him the outfit to let him carry his sword or his spear to take him up all the way to the horse from three to six helpers. And she said at that time that they would have like tables to eat, maybe small ones, and they would eat uh, maybe chicken or uh, goats or sheep or uh, cows or whatever, beef, yani. and then they would throw the stones, uh, the, the uh, bones behind them they will clean themselves with their hands, with their beards and with their, I don't know, she was not with them, but this is how she described them. And the leftovers, the ones who are helping the knights would be eating from them, okay? That is in the knights' holes. Uh, once again, this is, no, no. The Great Hall, it's the same, the pillars, uh, the Great Hall, the Pillars Hall, it's the same one that we have seen over here, the black st stone, uh, it's not a stone, it's aluminum that covers the uh, cement, and uh, on the top of it, you can see the cement that uh, they have built or renovated the whole area when it collapsed. Okay, over here too, they have, over here there's, these all are cement. Okay, the crypt. The crypt, uh, according to our language, that is the church. They found over here tombstones, tombstones of those uh, high level, Crusades who were buried in the uh, complex itself. And this is the way to the crypt. And you can see that it's under the, uh, you have to go a few steps down in order to go to it. But the tombstone is, is almost at the end after we are done with the uh, underground tunnel, okay? Now the underground tunnel, the underground tunnel, we don't see it over here. Uh, they tell us that, of course, uh, there were about 60,000 people, European crusaders mostly, living an acre at that period of time. Of course, they needed, like I've mentioned before, toilets, public toilets, 30. There were in one place. So they needed to go to the toilets. They needed 
a lot of water for the sewage. And they gathered that sewage and uh, let it uh, go into that uh, tunnel that leads all the way out. Some others say this is a tunnel for their escape. When they needed to escape the place out of danger, then that is possible. Okay. Uh, this is the entrance we have talked about it. Okay. If we are looking from the north to the south, to the right of us exactly, there is a water well, as we have mentioned before. And in front of us, at the bottom, you can see the arches. There is a gate that is the entrance to the, uh, they call it the refractory. Uh, that is the dining room. And you can see staircase that leads to the upper floor. And if you take a look at the staircase, the stairs are not too high. They are not like the stairs that we do today, 17 centimeters. They are very easy to go onto. And they tell us maybe, maybe once again, uh, these stairs were used by uh, maybe uh, generals or uh, leaders of the army riding their horses and going up to the second and the third floor, not the third floor with the horse, to the second floor. That is where the headquarter of the uh, hospitalers used to be. Okay? Nowadays, everything has changed. They renovated. It looks a lot better than uh, what I show you. On the top over there, this is another view from the south to the north you can see uh, the prison that we call the citadel on the top, okay? That is the citadel. And the floor of the uh, the ceiling, that is, the ceiling of the uh, knight's halls is the ground of the prison from the outside, okay? The western halls over here, they are not yet uh, being dug. So it takes a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort. According to what uh, they have told us, they have pulled, you know, when, when the Crusaders were defeated by Salah ad din first, and he just uh, threw them out of the country. And we remember the uh, battle at uh, Hattin. But the other uh, Mamluk, when he conquered the Crusaders, he did not want anything staying on the ground because he was afraid that they might come back in order to go into these places. So he could not destroy them, but he filled them with a lot of dirt, a lot of dust. And they tell us that maybe over 50,000 tons of that rubble was taken from these places and uh, carried out of the city in order to bury it, okay? Over here, you can see, this is what we call the toilets, the toilets, okay? There are a lot of toilets, like I've mentioned before, about 30 toilets over here. That is when, uh, where I showed you the photo before. Over here, you can see the gate through the gate to the left. This is the public toilet area, okay? Over here, this is where we enter to the courtyard. We came from here to the courtyard. Now these walls in the northern area are already open. They have excavated everything. Okay, keep on going. This is the refractory. You can see, in my opinion, this is the beautiful uh, hall. Uh, you can see the three columns, one after the other. You need about six people to uh, hand in hand to circle each column. And where the uh, flags are, to the left-hand side, that is where the pleur uh, elise is found on the column. The dining room, they have set already the tables for you to go and eat, okay? And this is the tunnel. Of course, uh, sometimes 
uh, it's uh, wide enough sometimes it's high enough sometimes it, you have to bow in order to go through it and sometimes you will touch the walls on both sides but this is the tunnel it's either for sewage maybe they have already uh, done their researches and it's for sewage or maybe it was for the escape like the templars tunnel okay after we are done with the crypt and uh, after we finish the tunnel and the crypt we go out to the market the souk small one and then we turn left and we can go to uh, the turkish bathhouse the turkish bathhouse it doesn't have to relate at all with the crusaders period this is an Uthmani period already and of course uh, once again if you have visited a long time ago, they did not have these things to show you how it used to look once upon a time. A person that is the uh, coffee maker uh, who brings the coffee to uh, another person sitting over there, either going to the sauna or staying uh, at the uh, maybe ref refrigerarium or the tipidarium. You know that the uh, Turkish bath, of course, in addition to working with the people, making massages and things like it. But underneath, the, uh, there are three rooms. The first one is called refrigidarium or frigidarium. The second one, you have to stay in the refrigidarium, uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, and then go into the second room, which is called tepidarium. Tepidarium from the word tepid. That means dafi, bil Arabi, dafi. Frigidarium, that means cold. They did not have any means to cool it down. It's the normal temperature. But the second room is a lot higher. And you stay in the tepidarium for another 10 minutes. And then you go into the calidarium. They call it calidarium. That is what we call the sauna. Underneath, you will see a flat area at the bottom. That's where you will be sitting. It's very uh, hot. Underneath it, there is a fire. They will bring wood, they burn it, and it becomes very hot. You sit on it, and then you start sweating, and you start uh, having a lot of heat. What do you need? You need to throw some water on you. And when you throw the water, the water evaporates and go to the ceiling. The ceiling looks like a dome. Okay, and then it gathers, that water gathers and condenses and yani yatakathaf, and it goes once again. So there is a circulation for the water, but you keep on pouring water on yourself. And then uh, one uh, person who takes care of you, who would make a massage, and then he would rub you with uh, something which is very hard. And sometimes they would uh, stick uh, you and uh, you might be tortured over there. I've tried it in Turkey, so don't try it yeah. if you are like me. There is a story about the Turkish bath. Of course, there was one day for women like Al-Harbaji uh, today. Wednesday is for ladies, not the whole complex, but one pool and the sauna and the jacuzzi. They tell us that there, that <clears throat> there was a fire at the bathhouse and Ladies who are inside were naked, like most of the women, uh, men when they are by themselves. Now, there was uh, two things to do, either to stay and die or to run away and be exposed to the men. And a lot of them, a lot of the women, escaped that fire. And there is a saying in Arabic, matu, the ones who were embarrassed uh, to go from the fire, they died inside, but those who did not uh, uh, get embarrassed, they were saved. So this is the bathhouse. Okay, from the bathhouse, uh, over here nowadays they have a movie. Uh, Lutf and Wessel from Nazareth is one of the actors, if you go and see him. I don't remember the others. They tell us about the people who used to go to the uh, bathhouse. Now, going uh, from the bathhouse, uh, as if we are going back to the fortress, 
we will meet with Al Jazar Mosque that was by built that was built by Al Jazar. Like I've mentioned before, Al Jazar was a very cruel person, cruel yani qasi, cruel person who uh, could have killed those who said no, or he would uh, uh, cut a tongue of a person who speaks at him, or a ear of a spy, or he was very cruel. And he was known as a cruel person when he killed uh, 70 Bedouin uh, leaders back in Egypt who were against his friends. So he was giving uh, the uh, time to rule Akko. So he ruled it. One of the things he done, that was uh, a mosque. In addition to the mosque, a theologian center, Islamic theologian center, uh, and uh, a study. In, in addition, in, in the outside, this is the inside. In addition, in the outside, there are Sabil, water fountains for those people. And of course, a place for wudu, uh, cleaning themselves from whatever they have. One of the most beautiful, it used to be once upon a time, very famous. Nowadays, it's famous, but not as Al Haram Sharif or uh, back in Mecca and uh, Medina. But people who come over here, a lot of them would like to go and visit it. Inside, inside the mosque, they have the hairs, uh, the beard of uh, the Prophet Muhammad that was taken from Abu Bakr. Uh, he, they cut his uh, beard and uh, the hairs of that beard were uh, divided between a lot of people. And few of the herds are found in this mosque, in this box. And only Laylat al-Qadr, they take it out for people to see. They uh, called it in, in uh, Turkish, Sakal al-Sharif, the bread, uh, the beard of uh, the Prophet Muhammad, okay? And this is why it's not just famous, it's holy for the Muslims to go and visit it. Now we go outside the whole complex, and this is again one, uh, one of the old uh, photos, uh, as you can see, 1878, by uh, one of the French uh, photographer or artist, and he took Al Jazeera mosque over here, uh, Al Jazar, sorry, not Al Jazeera. And you can see in front of it towards us where the arches are. This is what we call the white market, the white market that we see even till today, okay? Uh, the white market, but you have to stand on the walls. Now, Al Jazar, and before Al Jazar, Dahir al Omar, who ruled Akko also, he fortified Akka. They made, uh, the Crusaders made a moat, and uh, Al Jazar, Dahir al Omar, before him, uh, they added a lot of uh, stones and rubble to the walls, and when Al Jazar heard of Napoleon Bonaparte coming from Egypt to uh, conquer uh, Palestine at that period of time, he rushed uh, his people to uh, come and work for him 24 7 in order to add stone by stone, huge ones, to fortify the city. The only place that he did not fortify it was the area from the sea. Uh, the Crusaders did one part, and the others were falling. Over here, where uh, Steve uh, made the circle, that is the Templars area. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> if you take a look over here, this is Mount Missouri. Sure, sure. <clears throat> so. Uh, This is a double wall. In between, there is a moat, dry moat. Nowadays, when you pass in order to go to the uh, mosque or to uh, go to the complex of the Crusaders, to your left-hand side, you might see a basketball field all the way down 
over here, basketball field. And that tells how big the place is. Okay. Next. Now, maybe I've taken this photo, uh, put it over here before we go up to the walls, but it's all right. This is the treasure in the walls of a uh, museum in the walls. I have the uh, opening hours and I have the uh, entrance fees. They do have, when you go up to the ramp and you go all the way uh, to the top of the walls, the eastern walls, uh, you would see underneath that ramp, you would see there is a door you have to go down in order to go through it. A very beautiful from the Turkish period mostly, uh, very beautiful uh, furniture from that period of time, uh, either cupboards, uh, sofas, uh, glass, uh, whatever you want to see over there. Okay, we have talked about these things. And this is over here, I wrote, uh, wrote uh, red lines are the uh, land walls, green, the moat, blue, the sea walls over here, and the yellow are the gates. Uh, it's the same over here. No need to go back to it. Uh, maybe they want to see the hands, okay? Uh, Al Jazar and Dahir Umar, since Akko became very important city in the uh, Galilee area and in the whole area of Palestine, and a very uh, big uh, port because the port of Jaffa uh, was gone, the port of Haifa was not in use at that period of time. So they needed hotels for people who would come to Akka, either to move afterwards or to stay. Uh, they built a lot of uh, these, we call them Khan in, in the uh, Turkish language. Khan means a place where you dwell, where you stay. Some of them came to stay for a period of time to visit the city and the surrounding area. And some of them who were merchants would come stay for a night and then move to another night. We have over here Khan al Fringe and we have over here Khan al Omdan. Nearby Khan al Omdan uh, to the uh, south, there is what we call the uh, Templars, the Templars over here, the Templars Tunnel. Okay, and this area over here, this is the area of the temples that sank down. Okay, we have a lot of uh, these uh, hands. I will show you uh, part of them in a minute. Once again, this is another uh, photo and another area of uh, Akko during the Crusaders period. Go on. Uh, these are the walls. We come to the uh, walls uh, through here. Okay? Uh, if the bus stops uh, at the uh, parking lot of the uh, Crusaders area, then we come back and there are a few steps lead us all the way up to the top where we showed you and we start moving all the way. Now, if you take a look at the moat, take a look all the way over here. These are, over here, these are uh, Muslim, the first uh, uh, period during the Umayyad period, Muslim walls, okay? You can see uh, they are inclined. Uh, we call it glacy. They are inclined and on the top of it, there are the Crusaders and then afterwards Dahir al Omar and Al Jazar walls to the right also. The Muslims did not make a moat, so uh, you would find in front of you only a wall. Maybe it wasn't that hard for people to climb it, but it was enough for their protection. Now, over here, we are walking on the top of the ground to the left and to the right. If you are going through that, uh, it's not steps, it's a uh, few steps there is. 
and very easy. These are guard uh, stations, okay? And you can keep on going. You can see some cannons. Uh, I wrote over here the cannon ramp on the walls. You would see cannons of the British who came and helped uh, Nap uh, who killed, helped Al Jazar against the invasion of Napoleon. And that was the reason he was able to stand in front of Napoleon Bonaparte uh, and uh, stay as uh, ruler of Akka until 1804. Land gate. It's okay. Okay, these are part of the southern walls. And in front of me, you can see uh, a church that is St. John the Baptist, okay? John the Baptist. Uh, the same view, but it shows you more walls and all the way to that church, St. John. Over here, we have the fly wall, the fly wall. Uh, they call it in Hebrew, Zvuv. Uh, I don't know what, uh, what you call it in Arabic. Uh, the fly tower, not just the wall. Uh, some uh, Jews uh, take it back to Baal Zbu and the uh, Torah, but uh, the others nowadays say it's a remaining uh, of the wall from the uh, Crusaders period, from the Bizan harbor that was there at that period of time. And you see on the top of it, there is one person, the uh, uh, people of Akko uh, swim very beautifully. They don't afraid of jumping from that height. Okay. Once again, the drawing to the left or the photo to the left, uh, it's either coming up to the ramp on the top or going down, okay? Uh, and the uh, to the western wall, to the left-hand side, this is uh, the Pisanian uh, port, and some of them are coffee shops and restaurants, one of the most beautiful and tasty ones and expensive. Now, this is the uh, port of Acre today. Uh, you see over here a mosque with the green dome and the green minaret. That is Al Bahar Mosque. Back, all the way to the back, that is the mosque of al Jazar. Over here we come to the uh, guest houses or hotels that you can call, or uh, Khan, like they call them in uh, Turkish, Khan el Omdan. And there was a dispute about Khan el Omdan between the municipality and the Arabs who are living there. And they call the uh, tower behind it the watch tower. Uh, the municipality wanted to destroy Al Khan. Uh, they say uh, it's not going to stand an earthquake. It will fall on the people. So far, they did not do that, but they stopped visiting. You can see it from the outside. You cannot go inside. And to the left-hand side, you can see Khan Shawardi. Khan Shawardi. It's uh, beautiful and still functioning as coffee shops and restaurants. There are two more Khans, Khan Shuna to the right hand side. Once again, they use it as a restaurant and uh, for shows and etc. And to the left hand side, this is Khan al -Ferenj. Once again, it looks nice. And that is the Teresanta Tower behind it. We come nearby Khan el Omdan. There is an entrance to the Templar's Tunnel. Uh, the Templar's Tunnel starts with, uh, if you are coming from uh, the sea or the road that is adjacent to the sea, there is one opening, but it separates in one place. And maybe I have it, I don't know. Uh, but it's in the Templar's Quarter and at the bottom of it, there is some water. Maybe there is a spring of water that uh, runs the water from all the way uh, nearby Khan el Omdan all the way down. And it's also for escape. You can see how huge it is. It's not like 
the Hospitaller's Tunnel. Now, Aka or Ako or Acres and Jean de Acre, they needed water. They tell us at the time of uh, Dahir al Omar, others say at the time of uh, the uh, uh, Al Jazar, and others say go back to the time of Ptolemaeus. He brought water to the city from Cabri. You know where Cabri is, to the north of Akka, to the north of uh, Naharia. And these uh, water aqueducts, uh, you have seen similar to them back in Caesarea, right? That's it. Okay, thank you. That's it. Wow, 7.30. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you, everyone.